everyone. I am Ian Plant, your host of Photo Masters Live. And today we have a very special guest. He is one of the creative geniuses behind Photo Pills, which has been described as the Swiss army knife of photo planning apps. It is an amazing app that can help you plan your next photo shoot. Raphael Pons, welcome to Photo Masters. Thank you for having me, Ian. Well, we're Thanks. looking forward to learning more about PhotoPills, so I will turn things over to you if you can just maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, about PhotoPills, and then get started with your presentation. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, the idea today is to go over uh, mainly the planner. You know, the PhotoPill uh, has many, many tools, but the main one, the most important one, is the, the planner, the map-based uh, planner that can help us plan our shots from home. We create photo pills to have you guys imagine photos, come up with different compositions, the sun, the moon, the Milky Way, plan them. You know, the planning means to find the right spot and the right shooting data and time. That's photo that you have in mind to really occur so you can go and capture it. And uh, yeah, we started working on the app. I think it was in 2010 and we launched the first day version in 2013, iOS, then three years later, Quick our jobs to Kerman, the developer, the only developer of Polypus that we had, what that would happen at uh, that time. Now we have six or seven, I think, to uh, try to download, the, the, develop the new thing that's coming. Uh, and here we are, Kimmer is growing, and I can't wait to, to share uh, more about Polypus. And please, if you have questions on Polypus, let me know because for me, I'm here with you live. So if I can answer your, your questions and help you move forward with your planning, your photos, I'm more than happy to do that. Without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to start talking about photo pills. Here we are, these photo pills. And you see at the top, you have three menus, my staff, uh, the academy and pills. Um, uh, as I said, we created photo pills that will help you imagine, plan, and legendary. And I always tell people the same thing. Before you start learning how to use the pills, you need to forget about pills. You need to forget about them too. What's important is uh, to decide an idea, to decide a goal. What's the photo you want to uh, plan? What's the photo you want to capture? Is it going to be uh, a sunrise next weekend or next Sunday in a place you know? Or is it going to be uh, the Milky Way in the media because you want to plan to the media? or it's going to be the next school mode. You need to have a goal before you go and start learning to uh, use the app. And I think that because uh, then you can go to uh, the academy section. In the academy section, uh, you go to the academy section and tap on the how-to articles. You will have our our, our how-to uh, magnific guides. So if you want to photograph the Milky Way, you have a guide here that will get through the whole process of photographing the Milky Way, including planning your photo. Why I mention this? Because you have the desire to put up the Milky Way and you don't know where to start, and you don't, how, you don't know how to plan the Milky Way, you can come here and find my videos and guide on how to plan, how to use so close to plan the Milky Way. And believe me, plan the Milky Way, it takes only 10 minutes to, to learn, it's super easy. But you also have planning the moon. Maybe start your rules. Oh, here we are. So you can also learn how to plan the full moon, which is the most difficult thing. I think you can postpone with what build. The moon is tricky. We'll give you an example today, and we can help you learn how to plan the moon. But uh, again, I mentioning these guys because probably you're going to forget everything you're going to teach you today. Uh, but here you'll find all the answers. Well, you want to photograph the moon? Well, you'll learn how to photograph the moon, the gear you need, and how to plan the, the moon. Given a date, or if you don't know a date, but you know the photo you want, you can, we'll see you later, you can use the fine tool of photo pills to find exactly the date and time the photo you want actually happens. So very important, the academy will have two guides. Uh, next time you have an idea of a photo and you don't know where to start, you can go to the guides and learn how to plan the shot on how to photograph it. Step by step. But photo pills is about creativity, it's about imagination. And to get you inspired, we build the uh, awards uh, field here in my stock. And here what you'll see is the photos that we feature every day, photos that have been imagined, planned, and captured by the Photobills community all over the world. And as you see, the community is pretty creative. Uh, three categories, at the moon, the sun, and the Milky Way. 
And every day we feature uh, a photo and uh, you can learn about the story, a uh, bit of the deep data and the camera experience that were used to capture the shot. And if yeah, you're looking for inspiration, I strongly recommend you to come click here to the world and uh, get inspired by the community. And when you have an idea, and when you know a location and you want to, for example, plan or sunrise or next Saturday and next Sunday, then you can go to the group menu and here you'll find all the tools. Uh, Ian was mentioning that little fields is known as the Swiss, Swiss night for photographers. Well, these are the fields for the, the main tools. Each field solves uh, a particular problem. Uh, the photo pills, uh, the name comes from the idea of the web that we create pills that help you solve your pain uh, yeah. as photographers in order for you to get the shots you want. So we have pills that make your imagination fly, like the awards feel here. And we have pills that are real pain killer, right? The, that can answer the questions like, okay, I need to talk right the depth of field, or I need to. Uh, I mean the field, and I want to uh, plan uh, my nuclear shot or my my star drone shot. When you're home, you can use the planner tool to plan your shot. The planner is the first one you see in the top right hand corner, right uh, left hand corner. But you don't always need to use the planner only during the till, and you don't know, for example, where the sun will rise. You can use the sun. and use the AR. You'll see that at the bottom we have the AR button that uh, represent all the calculations we make in my, you know, if you see it in my mouth hole. And the swelling is right over there and we'll be standing here, right? And the horizon here, you set the sun there and you can just fly your feet up my way, change the time and see where the sun will be setting, right? Why I mentioning the sun field? Because this works offline without internet connection. So you're in the field and you don't know where the sun will rise in your setting or you wanna know if uh, when a building will hide the sun or when the sun will hide behind the building, you can just, you know, tap on the AR, find the sun, and then understand when the sun will be hiding. By swiping from right to left, you change the time in the here. And you see when the sun will be hiding behind the building or where we uh, sit it or rise it, right? These are the problems that the might already use. Nice yeah, week. Rafael, if I could just yeah. interrupt really quickly, I just wanted to say that I find this augmented reality to be one of the most incredible tools for photo planning. It's just amazing when you're out there and you're using it to f figure out exactly, to see visually where the sun is going to rise and set. You know, I found right. it useful planning solar eclipses where you can actually visualize in the sky exactly where the solar eclipse is going to be. So it's an incredibly powerful tool. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, 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 and powerful and so easy to use because, uh, yeah, you'll feel afterwards that the planner is being more complicated and uh, more skills, but to use the sun, the moon, or an IPR tool, for example, all you need to do is to know how to tap a button. And in the IPR tool, for example, you want to plan a milk body shot, it's at least just tapping the IPR, and here you have the horizon, here you have the polaris. The background color is yellow now at the moment because of daytime. I have the date and time here. It's 5 11 p.m. here. Uh, so it's yellow because it's the uh, daytime. We have the milk weight here. And if I spot my thing from my left, I'll change the time forward until the time time. It's the background color from yellow, daytime, golden hour, orange. And then when it's crystal clear, I use the color of the background is because it's at night time. And you just need to spike. Your change the time until you have the look way position you want. For example, you want to grab it straight. This red dot here is the core look way, or there's a graphic center, the standard, the more the right part from look way here. So I know that tonight here at 1 50 a.m., the look way is going to be in that direction. So if you're in the field and you have a tweet, for example, or a rough formation in front of you, you can just change the time until you get the look way. Maybe you want a diamond on the Milky Way, maybe you want a vertical composition. When you know the time, the Milky Way is not because you want, then you need to walk around because you know where your subject is, you know where the Milky Way is on it. So you can just walk around and compose your shot. It's as simple as that. And as I said, it's great for a startup school. 
digital lighting. You know that if you frame the North Star in the North Hemisphere, you're going to get the circumpolarity. The stars will appear to rotate around uh, the planet. And you'll have this two conference uh, uh, pattern in your total chart. But if you're fading east or west, you get this other pattern here. The blue line you see is the celestial equator, and the stars appear to travel in straight light and straight line on the equator, and they diverge away on both sides of the equator. Very nice pattern. And if you frame south, you capture arches. You start with the striped arches of both. Uh, your horizon and have yeah, there will be pretty cool. So you use the field in front of your subject and you want to plan a star trail shot. Just that on the night here, it doesn't matter if you're offline because we only use the GPS coordinates of your phone, no problem. And you just find a place, for example, and then you know and walk around until you place, for example, your subject under the polar or the star, and you can shoot. Uh, so you know the shooting spot to get this triple polar image above the uh, tip. For the Milky you swipe, right to left, you change the tire, or the Milky Way is a bit newer. And when you know where the Milky Way is going to be, then you can walk around on the floor. It's so simple. That's the power of the materialities. Uh, Ian said is uh, super simple and really, really visual uh, to find your spot. We have a question, Rafael. Okay. Yes. For Rick, should I put the app on my iPhone or Mac or both? Where should he use? Uh, the one is available on Android and uh, iOS. Uh, so mm -hmm. you should put it on the iPhone. Uh, for Mac, we're working now on the premium version of Corotil, which is going to be web based. It's going to be a switching based and it's going to be a, a platform. We're creating a platform for the community. And that's going to be, uh, uh, you'll be able to use it on Android, iOS, and Mac, and have an, uh, an account and, and have everything synchronized to your devices, which is something that's, that we, has been requested uh, for a long time. So, uh, but this will come at the end of 2024. I think it's going to be more beginning of 2025, I hope. And when we launch it, we'll be probably like uh, non stop. So, yeah, you have an iPhone. Or an Android, you can install it. You can also install it on um, a Android tablet or an iPad if you have them. And you only need one li license for iOS and another license for um, Android. So you have an iPhone and an, an Android tablet, you need to license. But if you have an iPad and an iPhone, you can install the builds under the same license on both devices. This is the way you this platform works. Great, thank you. Okay, time to go to the planner. So the planner, as I said, is the most powerful tool. And why is so powerful? Because, well, from full can plan any truck anywhere in the world. And we use the planner to plan our for activities or for adventures around the world. Uh, what we do is we plan photos, for example, in Namibia, and then we travel to catch them or invite the community to join us in this adventure. Cool. So, what do you need to start planning? Actually, planning is a uh, three steps for me, three steps uh, system or method. You need to learn how to move the red P. The red P you see on the map, which is going to be your true spot. Because you'll need to change the position of the red P and then place it next to your set to start planning uh, your shot. For example, imagine that you come to Menorca or I'm here now on the island. To where we do the Crocodile scan every year. We are, we're based in Spain, but Crocodile was born in this little island here. It's only a 30 mile uh, long island, uh, 45 kilometers long. Uh, yeah, you need to learn how to move very big. First step, you know, a step is to change the time using time bar. You see this colorful bar that's moving uh, below the map or under the map. That changes the time. And then you need to understand the position of the sun, the moon, and the Milky Way using the map information and also the so panels, the panels above the map, which are key. So how to move the red pin? Uh, it's pretty simple, but there are five ways to move. The one in the one I use the most, um, 
before that, I want to mention that the more subjects we know, the more cool locations we know, the easier it's going to be for you to find the top. Why? Because then you can start playing and placing the red team to those locations and see the condition of your life, right? For example, if you want to come to Menorca and photograph the sunrise on Sunday, next Sunday, we did with the lighthouse that we have here on the island. The first uh, thing you need to do is to place the red pin next to the lighthouse. How do you do that? You can just do a log press on the map and you place the red pin where you're tapping on a holding or where you're doing the log press. So basically, I forget about the red pin. I just go to a nice place and I, for example, there is not a lighthouse here. Lots of lighthouse minerals and do a long prayer. That's, for me, that is the easiest way to get the red team where you want. Then you can do drag and drop it. You drag and drop it. This is great for uh, precise movements. Imagine that you want to place the red pin right next in between these two walls here. You just drag. And you leave the, the red beam fall where the end. If you want to place the red beam where you are, maybe you're scouting and you want to place the red beam where you are. On the map, you find two buttons. Plus button. And the, uh, yeah. the plus button and the, the layout button. If you tap on the plus button on the map, the first button here on the left is the GPS button. If I tap it, the red pin is placed where I am. <laughs> I am today, you know, uh, and I place the red pin on where I am. So again, tap on plus and tap on the on the first button on the left side. Great. This is super important. If you want to recover previously of the red pin, you can Tap the undo and redo button. You have that here on the plus. And if I tap on the back arrow here, I can go back until I have the red pin, for example, in our house. Yeah. Here. Okay. That is fun. Where I wanted to plan my sunrise shot. Okay. Another way to move the red pin, uh, at the bottom, you see that you have many options. You have the find button, super important, the AR and night AR, which, is the, which are the major priority group. But if you use these buttons here, you need to be at the red pin position. Everything in the planner is linked to the red pin position and the date and time that is selected with the timer. So if you want to use the AR or night AR to plan your midway shot, you need to be where the red pin is. Okay. And then you have the load and save. The save button allows you to save plan, which will save the shooting spot, the red pin position, and the date and time of the photo. And then you can also save the red pin position as a point of view, that's the location. And this is very useful. You want to save uh, a location to plan shot later. But then you have the low button. The low button, here you have many options. The first one is the search address where you can, can type here, here you go. Your, if I want to place the red pin in New York, and the red pin will place in Manhattan. I'll go back to Menorca by tapping on the undo button again. Uh, tap on load again. So I have the red, the search address. You can type name, you can paste coordinates here, and the red pin will be placed on those coordinates. And then you can load a plan. Imagine that you want to re check the plan that you saved. You can load it from here. Uh, you can load according to interest, and the red pin will be placed on that point of interest. I have a few points of interest saved here. And, and you just can load one, for example. For example, here, I'm going to search for a bigger tweet. 
A world being a fool. Being a click in the media. And that's a point of interest. I saved and I the rock formation in the media that has uh, the shape of a finger. There you see the shape, the shadow. So you can imagine how uh, straight it is. And the movie is an amazing place for us to walk away. That's why we love doing adventures there. Okay, so if you want to load the point of interest, then you click, you tap on load, and you go again to point of interest. And if you have a list of point of interest, you can search point of interest, and you can load it. You can also load the latitude and longitude, or you can load a geotag photo, or if you're scouting, for example, you take photos with your phone, and you allow the camera of your phone to save the coordinate, the GPS coordinate in the photo, then in Codopil, you'll be able to load uh, that photo from your camera roll and uh, the red pin will be placed where that photo was taken so you can start uh, planning the shot. So that what you type photo mean. So load is very important, uh, very important. And it's complicated. I know it's not obvious and probably this will change a bit in the newer version or make it yeah, easier to use. Uh, but yeah, you know that the load hide all the cards in here. Uh, that's very important. And why I'm wasting so much time, we're investing so much time in you know, showing you how to move the red pin, because it's the first step is to place the red pin next to your subject. So you can start planning. Sure. So going back to our example here, if you want to come to Menorca and photograph sunrise next uh, Sunday in February, then uh, the first step always is to move the red pin in our place it next to your target. Second step would be to set the date to the next target. How do I do that fast using, using the time bar? I double tap on the time bar to set the date to today. And now you see in our today is July 29th, 2024, 5 10, 5 p.m. And now I can just swipe to the left until the time is set to Sunday. And as you see on the time bar, you have the horizon here, and then you have the sun and moon path described on the um, the time bar. And also the daytime light blue and the dark blue is nighttime. And the golden hour is the orange color you see in the time bar. Perfect. Okay. Second step accomplished. I have already been next to my lighthouse. I have uh, the date set to next Sunday. And now I need to understand the position of the sun and where the sun will be rising. Right? If you have a goal, you have a question. You need to know where the sun will be rising and at what time. You have the time for the sun right on the top panel. And by the way, all the time on the, the app are local time. If you move the repeat to the media, it will automatically adjust to the local time there. So you plan your shot uh, for uh, the local time. To make sure that that's true, you need to tap one on the time bar and make sure that you have the time zone to auto detect. If you tap one on the time bar, you get to the calendar. You can change the time here again with the calendar. But make sure that the time zone is fixed to auto detect. So every time you move the repeat to a different time zone, you only see a uh, local time. So make sure that you're right on the time for the job. Okay. What time the sun is rising? Well, I have it on the top panel on uh, August 4th, next Sunday, uh, at 6 44 uh, a.m. is when the sun is rising. What time is setting? At 8 uh, 53 p.m. I have the time in the time map here on the top level. The moon is rising at 21 a.m. and it's setting at 9 19 p.m. Where it is rising uh, uh, and setting? Well, I have the information on the map. On the map, this thick line you see represents the uh, sunrise, sunset, moonrise, moonset direction. The sunrise is the light. Is the the line that's yellow, and the yellow color matches the yellow color on the top panel. You see the arrow on the top panel for sunrise, 
ticks 44 a.m. in the direction of, of the peak yellow line, and it's set in the direction of the peak orange line. Yellow and or the yellow or orange. And the blues are for the moon, like blue is moon rays, dark blue is moon set. So I have the moon rays and moon set direction and the sunrise and sunset direction. If you want to remove the, the moon information on the map, you can tap on the second important button that we have on the map, which is the layer button here at the bottom. And from this button, you can decide what you want to have on the map. You can change the withdrawal mode. We won't see today. You can change the map. You know the map type available. You can also uh, enable a map tool. For example, if you want to see the field of view or the depth of field on the map when planning your shot, you can just uh, activate one of these map tools. And then on the map layers, you can, by tapping on the eye next to the layer, you can switch on and off the layer you need. Today, here, yeah, I'm starting planning the sun. So I'm going to switch on the sun layer. The moon layer, I'm going to switch it on. Later, I'm going to switch on the, the Milky Way to show you how to plan the Milky Way. But let's uh, stick with the sun now. So I switch off, I have switched off the moon layer and switch on the sun layer. So I only have the sun flying on the map. So I know that the sun, if I change the time, when it rises, it rises in the direction of the yellow line you see on the map. And now you see a second line moving, that's moving on the door to the map, which is the position of the sun at the selected date and time. So for example, at 8.54, you have it here on the time bar, 8.54, the sun is going to be in the direction here, the direction of the thin yellow line. So it rises in the direction of the yellow, the thin yellow line, and it's set in the direction of the thick orange line. Perfect. And now that I have the certain direction, I can decide my screen spot. For example, if you want to photograph the lighthouse having the morning or golden light falling from the side on the lighthouse, better to be shooting in this area because the light is coming in this way. But if you want to have the sun more aligned, for example, with the light, maybe I could go to the mid here. Some locations that are far away, maybe from here. You can try to align the lighthouse with the sun. Imagine that you want to put a wrap, uh, a big sun aligned with the lighthouse, you can go far away and find the spot where the lighthouse is visible and you see the sun rising above the Lighthouse. For a wide angle shot with with nice light, this could be a good shooting spot. If you want the the sun to be with a wide angle shot to be rising next to my lighthouse, maybe I'm having the sun on the plane, I can go and shoot from the rope here and have the rope as a uh, guiding line towards the lighthouse. Have the sun rising next or behind the lighthouse. Be a cool, a good shot. For a wide angle shot, well, you don't really need to really understand that the terrain here uh, is pretty easy terrain. But you want to photograph a long distance shot uh, with the lighthouse and the sun, for example, you need to understand the terrain. And here, I'm going to go straight for uh, the black pin, which is uh, one of the most difficult uh, parts of the field. I'll show you how to use the bad pin because it allows you to understand how high the sun, the moon, the Milky Way will be above the terrain. So you can picture the shot better in your mind. How do I switch on the bad pin? Well, I go to panel number two, which is this one here, and there is a button on the panel. If I turn the button on the panel, black pin appears on the map, and now I can use that, I can drop it and place it on my set. When I place the black pin, I always try to place the black pin where I think my subject, the lighthouse, meet 
the ground level. I never placed it at the tip of the lighthouse because this is just a photo and it's a projection. And as you see, it seems that the, the lighthouse is not straight up. Uh, the lighthouse is, is a state of uh, infrastructure, so building, so you need to place it right where you think that the ground level uh, of the lighthouse meets the, um, the drain. And the beauty of this black beam, and even if you don't use it for, you don't use it for the drain information, is that allows you to clearly have your uh, subject properly identified on the map. You I zoom out, I know that the black beam is on my subject here. So it's still clear. Also on the top panel, I see that the distance uh, between the two pins, this is 134 meters. So I have the shooting distance. But the most important, I have the sun height. This is the height on the center of the sun, 4.9 from black pinning. 4.9 meters from black pinning. This means that the center of the sun is at 4.9 meters above the terrain level where the black pin is. Uh, so it always from the terrain to the center of the sun. This is the height, the sun height. And in bracket, I have the size of the upper and size of the upper and diameter of the sun, 1.3 meter, which only depends on the shooting distance. The further away you are from your get, the larger the sun or the moon will appear to be uh, compared to your subject. And this is very important. The all when you want to plan long distance charts of the sun and the moon align with your sun. Now, I place the red being at almost one kilometer away from my sun. Why? Well, because I want to catch a larger sun, a much bigger sun compared to my subject. And as you see on the top panel in bracket, now the sun size is 8.8 meters much larger than 1.6, which is pretty cool. Also on the map, I have the size of the sun. This yellow band you see on the map is the size of the sun. So I know how big this will be compared to my sun. If you want to have this, uh, the diameter of the sun or the moon on the map, you need to tweak it on. So layers, orange layers, and then you go to the sun layer here and make sure that you have the show sun sign on. And the same layers for the moon, show moon sun. This way you'll have the size of the sun and the moon on the map. So you can understand how big the sun or the moon will be when aligned with the black hole compared to your split. And also in bracket, you have the size in number. So 8.8 meters is this distance here. Yeah. The width of the yellow band at the uh, black being distance. That, Raphael, is a mind-blowing feature of the app. I mean, that's just amazing to me that you can use the app to sort of figure out how far away you need to be zooming in with a longer lens to get the sun or the moon the size that you want it relative to your subject. That's really amazing. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. And it's great to clearly visualize it on a, on the map. I really love it when we implement this one. It's like, wow, I have everything now. I have the, the size of the moon, the sun, or the moon on the map, and also on the top panel, I have the diameter in my diameter in meters. And I need picture the image in my mind. For example, here, the lighthouse is twenty eight years, and I have the sun height at fifty one. So it's in both the lighthouse. If I do a long press on the time bar, I'd be able to change the time more precisely. And here, for example, I have the tenth of the sun, check on the top panel, at 28 meters. Well, that's 20 meters. Now, this shot here, say I have the lighthouse and the sun at the same height as the lighthouse, uh, but next to it, not behind the lighthouse. It's a really good shot, too. Oh, maybe it's not a bad shot. But if you want to align it, you want to have the sun behind the black pin, I only need to change my pruning as well. A bit more to the south until I align. 
every time you move uh, the red bee, topography changes, the brain changes. So again, change the sunlight, now it's 12, not 28. I need to iterate a bit until I get the panel meter. Again, and I'll need to readjust my shift. But again, No more. No. All this. Okay. Maybe not. There is a trick here. I'm going to show you. If you tap on the plot, and if you tap on this button here, expands the azimuth lines of the sun. And then if I turn the plus again, and I tap the spot pin button, I'm able to, you know, Move the blood being on the total this total uh, line, swap back the pin, and now I have the blood pin and the red the standard line with the blood pin, and with the stun at twenty eight. Well, let me think a bit more until it's twenty eight, and I'm gonna repeat the swap back. This is a bit tedious, yeah. but it's uh, the way. Okay. Oh, wait, uh, 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 no, we need some bad and heavy mileage. And just to be clear about something, Raphael, so yeah. the image that we're seeing here is just the, the fixed Google satellite image yeah. of wherever it's sourcing from. So the shadows that we see are not the real time shadows. That's no. it's always going to look like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in the premium one, uh, what's coming? We aim to have all these uh, in 3D. And uh, you have buildings in 3D, we'll be able to cast shadows, I think, for all. The Odyssey uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the shadows change, how to change the time as light changes. Uh, That'll be an amazing feature. Yeah, we can make that happen. Uh, you know, uh, it's, we've been working on this for four years, and uh, as business, uh, as interpreters, we have learned how to build a team. And I can say now that I have, we have a team that that all are doing great things. And first step will be to launch this beta version of what's coming, and then we'll keep improving. So yeah, hopefully sooner or later we can have all these features implemented, uh, which we need to be to put our bank. So that would be a really odd. Yeah. Uh, great. So this is an option for next Sunday. You want to put a wrap, uh, a big sun aligned with Dr. Lighthouse. Then if you're on uh, August 4th, 2024, at 6, 58 a.m., you're at the red pin position, you'll be able to de-visualize and put a wrap the sun rising next to the lighthouse and then slowly uh, approaching the, the tip of the lighthouse. This is accurate enough, but uh, all you need to be always ready to move a bit. Because the terrain information, the altitude of the terrain that Google has are not 100% accurate. You need to be always ready a bit to move around to adjust the composition when you see the sun or the moon appear in the frame. Uh, but the red beam position is going to be your the chart. Now, imagine that you want to follow up the same chart with the four. When does it happen? And teach you how to plan the next full moon, which is one way to plan the moon. But imagine that you want to draw from the red position, and you don't know where the moon is going to be aligned with the top of the lighthouse. How do you do it? How do you figure out? How do you know that it's not based on time? The moon is going to be right there behind the lighthouse. Well, for that, we use the find. And the, we, we named Fine, because in Puerto Pills, our main goal is to find legendary moments to the around. <laughs> in the new version, it's going to be a change to alignments that are easier to understand. And the loop magnifying loop, uh, magnifying glass icon will be for search addresses. You can think more understand. But let's find when the moon will be aligned with the tip of the line. See from the right position, the time they can find it. So, the whole part. And here on Android, you have only two options. You have find sun and find moon. On iOS, we develop four, but we only use two. That's, not, that's the reason we only develop the two we use on Android. 
And it is usually used at azimuth and elevation. You know, the azimuth and the elevation are the true coordinates that determine the position of the sun or the moon, or another celestial body. In this case, we're going to try to find the moon at the position in the sky. So, moon at azimuth and elevation. And now I need to talk about those three things. The first one is going to be the date. I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm start looking for possible date. Starting today. And for the moon, the, the moon I always choose through years. Through years. The moon. So I'm going to look when the moon is going to be where I want it to be. Starting today and in four years. The SMO is already set because the, this grouping you see here is linked to the black thing, and the azimuth, the uh, 68 point, uh, 89 degrees, is this angle. The azimuth is the angle measured from north. North is always at the top, and south to the bottom. So, azimuth 68.89 is this angle here from north to the grouping. Azimuth 90 is east. 180 is south, 270 is west. The error or the plus minus three degrees, it allows me to find more results. This blue band here is the area where Proclus will try to find the moon is in this blue area. In this case, I don't want it to be that wide. I'm going to reduce it. I'm going to tap on the numeric option here. I will change it to, let's say, one degree, let's see, we have a lot. So we have a much narrower uh, area and less result will, uh, will be found. Um, if your shooting spot allows you to move around in a wide area, I require you to use three, four, even five degrees of asthma of error or tolerance. Um, and sure, you're going to use so what's the next year we found some dates. Okay. And for the elevation, just tap on the elevation. And for the elevation, I always use the numeric option at the bottom. And basically what I do here is as the apparent height, I introduce the height of my subject, 28. This is the apparent height of the center of the moon, in this case, above the ground level of the loopy. So if I type in here 28 meters, which is the height of the higher house, and telling for the people that they want the, moon, the center of the moon to be at 28 meters, aligned with the top of the line. For the elevation, I recommend you to use 0.5 degrees uh, tolerance. And this 28 meters actually is an angle of 191. This is the degree elevation. Okay. I have it all. Oh, by the way, if I go to astronaut, you'll see here a dark area on the map. This is the area where this um, is never be there. And the same for the elevation. This dark area, you see on, on the this profile here, is where the, the sun or the moon is never there. The stage. Okay. Let's tap on the magnifying glass icon on the top right hand corner to find the possible dates. The moon will be aligned with or within my third. As you see, uh, I can tap on the page server to store the table and we have three full worlds but they are not in golden hour here for example on friday on october 18 2024 so next october at 10 43 pm the full moon will be where i want to be but it's going to be in the now to go twilight probably so maybe too dark so i'll go back and maybe Increase the asthma to see if we can get a golden hour uh, moon. Mm. Oh, yeah. Now I've increased the tolerance, so more options can be calculated. And now I have two golden hour full moons. Why I know with golden hour? Because the background color is or That's the golden hour. Daytime is light blue, and dark and black is nighttime. So based on the background color, I understand the natural light. You know, when you're flying in the moon, natural light is very, very important. Above all, when you're not shooting cityscapes. When you're shooting cityscapes, you can shoot the moon. You can get in one single exposure, correctly exposed your building, 
and the mold because the building is moved online. But you're shooting in uh, in nature when there is no not artificial light. Uh, if you shoot after the blue hour, probably you'll get the you'll have to shoot a double exposure. Uh, one for the moon and one for the Earth. Well, wow, but... that is that is just an amazing planning feature, and it also astounds me the the amount of complex mathematics that must go into figuring all this out. It is a harmonic genius because not only um, you know coding the formulas and equations, the protocols we made them work fast and smoothly uh, with our calls. So it's 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 always it amazes me how. Uh, how smooth it goes when it makes the calculation. So let's say, for example, the first one is on uh, February 12, 2025, next year, 628 p.m. Let's say the plan. And oh, a picture. I know I have the moon on the map, so I'll have to tap on the layers, switch on the moon layer, and switch up on uh, the sun layer. So now I see the moon. And as you see, because of the uh, tolerance I have, the moon is not uh, aligned with the lighthouse because we found another uh, a date where the moon is in the uh, direction. So now all I have to do is to change my spot and fine tune my plan. Always, what's great about the fine doctrine is it allows you to find the dates. The moon will be more or less where you want, and then you can fine tune your plan for that day. In this case, I just move the red pin a bit between spot. Until I have the move where I want, maybe I'm going to get it a bit higher. And yay. By me, changing the time, you change the position of the move. And now I'll change it. Okay. Let me move. Get my shot. So now I know that. And I might to do that. When you plan a shot, if you read the plan, you learn all that. I always love reading my, the plan. So if on February 12th, 2025, at 6 straight 7 p.m., I am at the red peak position. I'm going to to see the moon at a moon height, 20 meters, which is the same height as my house, and with a size of 8 meters, which is represented on the map. But it is here, so it's going to be pretty big, very nice. And the natural light, for the natural light, we can go to the other panel, panel number three, because the natural light is linked to the elevation of the sun. You know that the golden hour goes from the elevation of the sun between six and minus four, blue hour from minus four to minus six. Daytime is for the sun is above six degrees. From minus six to minus 12 is now the gold twilight. From minus 12 to minus 18 is astronomical twilight, and nighttime begins when the sun is below minus 18. In this case, the sun elevation is minus 2.54. Uh, minus 2.54 is an immediate light. This is golden hour. The moon is going to be yellow, but nice. the sun is below the horizon. The moon is going to be beautiful and yellow because it's golden hour at the end of the golden hour, almost approaching the end of the golden hour. So definitely, if there are no clouds, this shot is more trying, more capturing. The light is amazing, and in one in the spot, you'll be able to photograph the, the last bit, the lighthouse, and the moon. The question is, will the moon be in full if I focus on my own? And what sort of lens and aperture can I use to make sure that I'm getting a moon that can proceed if I focus on my own? Now for that, I'm going to show you how to use the map tools. So tap on the layer, little here, and I'm going to use the depth of field map. Here on the map tool, depth of field, DOF. And this tool is amazing because you can choose your cat. I'm going to leave the knife on that switch to my full frame. I can choose my focal length. For example, I'm going to start with 100 mil, 100 meters. I'm going to choose my aperture. I'm going to give it that F8. I'm going to choose uh, where I'm focusing. I'm focusing at the black pin distance. It means that I have the black pin on my subject. Sometimes I'm going to be focusing on my subject because I want to have the lighthouse dark chart. And then I'm going to be shooting in portrait. And I'm going to be shooting in the black pin direction. So I can align the field of the 
So on the map, now you see what will be in the frame with a hundred mil in a full frame and what will be outside the frame. How big the model will be inside the frame and how big the model will be compared to your set. In this case, maybe a hundred is too much. Maybe I'm going to try with 500 millimeters. Uh, 500 millimeters, maybe it's too narrow, so I'm gonna change it to 300. Maybe with the 300 is good enough because I can catch a bit of the you know, the foreground, the lighthouse. And you see the moon and the lighthouse will appear to be pretty big in the frame. But you see in the frame is the uh, the area that's not dark uh, and it's green. And then it is here, what will be in the paint by swiping this black color here. I'm going to align it with the black. So as you see, you can really plan through the very long detail. So in order for the length, I'm going to use be using. The question is now, if I'm focusing on the black paint on my skit on the light out, uh, will the mold will be, if folks will be, infinity will be excessively sharp? Well, uh, I can tell you that yes. Why? Because on the map, you have the hyperfocal distance here. This tree represents hyperfocal distance, 675 meters. And you know that you know, you understand what that hyperfocal distance is. If you're focusing at something that's behind that focal distance, then it may will be exactly sharp. And actually, here above the Google uh, logo, you have the uh, depth of field path limit, and it says infinity. And the depth of field near limit, this one is at 268 meters. So if I'm focusing at the lighthouse at 903 meters, I will have in focus from 265 still infinity. And this is with a 300 meter full frame camera and F8. If I close the aperture to F11, you'll see that the uh, depth of field near limit comes closer to the red room. You have even more depth. Of okay. Very powerful. And this is how you plan the moon, or you can also plan the sun using the fine tool. And you can also use, I invite you to use the, on the map layers, the map tools to even plan your uh, shot, uh, your uh, aperture and your length, the focal line you want to use. You can use it also for wide angle shot to understand what will be in the frame and outside the frame. Okay, uh, it's almost 6 p.m. And if I have time, I'm gonna go over how to plan the milk way very quickly. Um, yeah, sure, go ahead. Awesome. Uh, how to do upon the Milky Way? Well, the first thing as always, you need to switch on the Milky Way information on the map. You can tap on the layers button, on the eye next to the Milky Way layer. I'm gonna leave the moon because when I'm playing the Milky Way, I like having the moon on the map so I can understand where the moon is. At all time, I'm gonna switch off the map tools. So I'm going to leave the map only with the Milky Way information and the mold information. On the top panel, I've been showing you the most important panel, the black pink panel, the green pearl, the panel of the wall with the elevation of the sun, we give you the natural light, you don't have. You have the panel of the moon rise, moon set, sunrise, moon, moon uh, sunset, and also the face of the moon picture. You have the twilight here. You have the golden hour blue hour times on this panel here. Then you have uh, the first Milky Way panel. We give you the visibility times of the cladric center for the selected date and time. For example, uh, for uh, gonna double tap on the time bar to set the date to today. Now I'm gonna do a long press on the time bar to go back to 24 hours length. And today, tonight, at uh, July 29th, uh, the Pilates Center will be visible from 10 
49 p.m. till 3.09 p.m. And if I go to the second uh, panel, I have a picture of the Milky Way, which if I change the time, you'll see what happens. The picture on the top panel, remove this. Picture on the top panel is telling me how horizontal or vertical is the Milky Way core. And on the map, when it's daytime, you don't see the Milky Way. You only see these gray lines here and the circumferences. The, the light gray line is the direction where the electric center will become visible, and the dark gray line is where the electric center will become invisible. So if I change the time until it's nighttime, you'll see that the arc of the Milky appears. The electric center is the largest dot of the arc, or the arch. This arch here, you know that Milky Way is the Milky Way arch. The thin line you see on the map tells you the directions to where the Milky Way appears above the horizon. So these are the two directions where the Milky Way is crossing the horizon. And then you have the arc, and then you have the galactic center, which is the largest dot on the arch. And it's linked to the red team with, the, with this thick uh, white line. I'm right? telling you where the core is now. And the core becomes visible in the direction of the light gray line and becomes invisible in the direction of the darker gray line for the map. So for playing Milky Way, you need to understand the position of the Milky Way just by looking on the map. I know that now, for example, Milky Way is straight and vertical in the southwest directions. And if you look on the at the top panel, you see that the Milky Way picture is straight. And if I imagine I am at the red position and I use the night AR the night AR button at the bottom, night AR. I'll be able to visualize where the Milky Way is. That's how west. Of course, the Milky Way, the, the yellow, is the Arctic center, and the orange is off. And the Milky Way is completely very up, and it goes and dies in this direction. This is the first crossing point. You have, I have the moon here. So I understand that the moon is about to rise. So maybe you want to have the moon above the horizon when rising to allow you you know, to capture detail on the foreground, to use it as a light source to massively illuminate and not always bad to plan your local shots more hallucination of the day, the nice things, not less than 50% So at uh, uh, 1.41 a.m., the local is going to be in this direction, fully vertical, and the moon will be on our two rights. And actually, you have the moon rising. You see the blue line here? That I mean the position of the moon, right? So, for example, you want to plan a shot tonight of the Milky Way, straight and vertical with the lighthouse. Well, this could be a good thing. So, on July 13th, at 1 51 59 a.m., if I'm on the right position, I'll see the Milky Way tray in the southwest uh, direction and align with the light, the forest dark. And the moon will be above the horizon in the northeast direction, adding light in the foreground. So, yeah, I also have the lighthouse that helps me with the foreground. But uh, you need to understand where the moon is. If you don't want the moon, you need to see it before the moon rises. Right. Great. So, but this is the option for today. What about next month? What about in uh, October? What about May, March? Is it possible to figure out Milky Way when it's low in the sky for a nice panorama? When does it happen? Because in August, July, can get the Milky Way pretty straight and vertical, but not really low and horizontal because it's daytime when the Milky Way is low and horizontal. So the problem Milky Way, what I do is I place the red team, make sure I accept it, and then I understand all the possible compositions I can get throughout the year by gem time from new moon to new moon. And for each month, I check the possible composition. And you know that for a given month, you can get the same chart every day down the Milky Way. That's a good thing. 
the only conditions that will change are the cloud layer and the model. And actually, we can shoot the same chakra on the way for a couple of months. So if you go one day and spawn it, you can go the next day and you can get the same chakra. The only thing to pay attention is more, right? So the quantum way is what I never be, but I do is I place the red thing next to my subject. Right here, I place the lapin on my subject, just have you perfectly identified in the map. And then I will do a double tap on the time bar to set the date to today and now. And now I set the date to the next uh, new one. And how to do that? How I do that? I do it by tapping on the picture of the Milky Way. Just fine. And you know this secret because you're here watching this video. But it's super handy. You tap on the picture of the Milky Way one. And time will jump to the next new one. This on August 4th. And now I'll just play it time until I see all the possible combos. Well, in this case, you know, that the core will move between these two gray lines in the southwest direction. So you can go to the other side and grab a nice little way with your map. Stop again on the picture or on the top panel to jump to the next um, new one, which is on September the 3rd. And in September, the same, oh, even less time to put around the new toy. Let's go to October. Now in October, you can also get it vertically in the southwest directions. And even less time. In November, the core is almost not visible. In December, you don't have the, the core visible. You can shoot the wind of your pool. The wind of your pool hides many secrets. You don't always need the, the core or the electric tank. You can shoot the Milky Way every day and night. Basically, uh, what important is the composition. I'll tap again to go to January 2029, uh, 25, 29 January 2025. I'm going to tap until I go to March. And in March is when, in the northern hemisphere, I can get the Milky Way when it's low in the sky. You see how the alarm almost touches or touches the largest circumference here. And the scent of the galaxy, the Milky Way is far away from the red Well, this means that the arc is pretty horizontal. And you see it here also in one top panel how horizontal is pitch on the quick. You know, if I tap on the night car, well, I can visualize horizon right, doesn't point the Latin and, and the Milky Way arch above the landscape. And you see how. Uh, low is the milk word. I can get it higher without getting the time of the day. But when it gets for high, it is not nighttime anymore. I love March, you know, I'm sure March, April, May, you can get nice better out of the milk word, even though it's one of the okay. And now that I know where the milk is going to be, I can shoot my throat. But maybe I can. Here again from the road to get a nice Milky Way arching above my lighthouse here. So from this the heading position, the Milky Way is gonna be arching above my lighthouse. So I tap on the night wall, up the Milky Way arching above my lighthouse. Lighthouse will be right here, right at the center of arch. And the moon is under the horizon because uh, I'm buying during a new one, so no moon at all. And this is how you plan the Milky Way in any place, anywhere in the world. Just check every month, new moon, and uh, let's see all the possible promos you can get. And get a nice diagonal, so nice diagonal of the Milky Way. Yeah, and you can it. That could be another. Uh, good action. The possibilities are another. But the workflow is red pin next to your subject, double tap on the time bar to set the day to play and now, check the positions of the milk way and tap on the uh, picture of the panel here to jump to the next uh, uh, new moon date and check the compost. And you keep changing to the next new moon, next new moon until you find the shots uh, you like. And then, 
when the date arrives, you call me, you can go the next day. No worry. No. Because in one month, two months, you can get the same shot the milk way. But changes are the cloud conditions, the weather conditions, and the main core details. Okay, any any questions on move planning, some planning, way planning? Yeah, if anyone has any questions, you can either put them in the chat or unmute. I just wanted to very quickly say, Raphael, that uh, I find that PhotoPills is an amazing app. And I like all the thoughtful little details, like, you know, that little picture of the Milky Way so you know exactly what position it is at any time during the night. It's just such a, a thoughtful detail and it makes everything so much easier to visualize. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And we'll make our effort to make it easy, even easier. We can manage to get the 3D and everything that's going to be awesome. And then mm -hmm. the I can't wait to use it. Yeah. Even an idiot like me can figure out how to use PhotoPill. So very much appreciated. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. Uh, and we want to make it even more, more, more easier. And um, in, the, in the future, you guys, your feedback is going to be key to implement it and to keep it for me. We have a question um, about are there any changes to using photo pills in the southern hemisphere? Uh, no, actually, the, everything is the same. You can just, for example, go to, as I said uh, before, we could go to the media. But changes is our celestial bodies. I mean, the Milky Way looks so different in the south hemisphere. So, for example, you know, go to Fitzroy. Uh, which get the Milky Way really from Laguna de los Tres. Uh, I know you've been here. Uh, it's really a place of the black bit. The good thing about the southern hemisphere is that the here you can get the Milky Way. Vertical and also super horizontal, and with a nice panorama. And as you see, the core, the galactic center in the southern hemisphere, it's so high in the sky. If I tap on the night, they are so beautiful. You see how high is the core in the northern hemisphere, where in Spain you have the core always on the horizon here. But in the southern hemisphere, you can get it super high in the sky, right in the center of the arc. We need amazing but the the way you use it is the same doesn't make any difference uh you place a repeat on a nice spot you know and then you take that black pin on your subject and you know that this roy has uh these beautiful uh capes at the amazing position uh, actually we try to always go for the other way uh up here toughest part is the cloud play the south hemisphere in uh his room yeah, the weather there is fickle. We have a request uh, that you pick somewhere in Australia. Australia. The Australia is another amazing place. We need to put a expedition in Australia. We have one in uh, New Zealand. I never been to Australia. But if I place the black uh, the red bean in Australia, you see the, the how the Milky Way is. You can get it. Vertical, this is right above my head. Head up on the night, they are. I will see you night. Play. See the core? I have it just above my hand. Made. Uh, and you can get it for low in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Can we uh, switch it over to show the sun and the moon lines? Yeah. Sun and moon line. Switch off. And look great. So the good thing about that, we see that the moon and the uh, sun and moon. In the north, in the south, not in the south. Uh, so there is no difference actually, just uh, the same workflow. Uh, no, no difference at all. Yeah. So yeah. this works everywhere, basically. Works everywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we we've done expeditions that we just done in June in around uh, expedition here in uh, in New Zealand, uh, yeah. and we use for the build plan. Well, here it is a real remote, uh, crazy place to go. Uh, this beach warrior. I have a question. I don't understand this myself, but the question is, uh, why are the sun and the moon lines straight rather than sinusoid? 
straight, you mean? Well, if I zoom out, you see that they are not straight. Just because of uh, the curvature of the Earth. Yeah. Sorry, you you believe that the Earth is flat, but uh, that's why you have this curvature here. And uh, um, I could switch the and uh, go to the flat Earth mode here. The show real size. Uh, this is gonna be late because it doesn't make sense. If I delete, delete the Earth coverage, see that the lines are straight. But obviously, obviously, you plan a shot with these lines here. You won't see many different the way because you shoot from very close to your subject, but you will plan a long list of shots with the sun or the moon, let's say 10k or 20k. The moon won't be where you're planning with these lines. You need to take into account Earth coverage for that we switch on the real atomic line. And this is why we see this line. And actually, if I place the flat pin, you see that the line between the two pins are, is not straight. That's because of our curvature. Right, right. So, yeah. you know, basically it doesn't really help you much to see the curved lines because you're never going to be far enough away from a subject where the curvature is really going to be something that's so, going to show up in your photos, right? People that, 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 that shoots uh, from island to island, you know, um, uh, yeah. I've seen shots of the moon, uh, you know, in Madrid, for example, a shot of the moon rising 50k away from, from Madrid, trying to get a huge moon above the, the towers in Madrid. You need to take into account the coverage of your, uh, sure. uh, the, on that distance, you know, both 10, 10 kilometers. You need to take it into account if you want to be accurate. Uh, right. more, more, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Rafael, thank you very much. This has been incredibly informative. I know I'm inspired. Looking at the features of this app, I think that this is an incredible planning tool that should be in every photographer's toolkit. Well, you know, on every photographer's phone. And so you just go to the app store for your device and you can download photo pills. Yep. App store, uh, Android phone, uh, on the and on Google Play, you can get it. And really excited about this coming. And we have a big community around the world, uh, what we're building, we call it the whole of the community. And, uh, yeah, planning from a pole with the computer is again, you can for me and it's a, uh, can't wait to release it. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Raphael. And thank you everyone for joining us live and for everyone who's going to see this video later. We'll see y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for having me.